Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. They cry out in today's gospel, Lord, save us, we are perishing. Today we have this gospel account where the disciples and our Lord are in a boat and a great storm arises in the Sea of Galilee. And for the disciples, they are there in the boat and they are trying to save their lives, right? They are fighting with this storm, they're trying to get the boat on track, the waves are crashing and you can imagine you can imagine how frantic they were. You can imagine how um, panicking um, as they see the storm, which maybe is the biggest storm. We don't know. Maybe it's the biggest one that they've ever seen. And here they're afraid that they are gonna, their lives will end here with Jesus in the boat. You may know very well the famous Rembrandt painting of this account, where he depicts the great storm and the boat with the disciples in it. And the boat is kind of going up the wave. And, uh, and as it's going up, you can see that wave, the water crashing into the boat, and there's lots of light at the top. And you see the faces of the disciples, and you see how hard they're working and like they're doing everything that they can, you can see. Um, and then at the bottom of the boat, there's something very different. You see that Jesus has already woken up, and the calm is beginning to set in. The disciples at the bottom of the boat are, are looking at Christ. And there's a great calm. It's quite dark, but Christ's face is lit up. You can see his face. Um, for, for us, when we look at this, there's lots of lessons, right? Um, one of them that we see is how the, how the disciples at the top of the boat, where the wave is c crashing in and where everything seems dire, right? How maybe instead of looking to Christ, they're looking to each other right? We are to look intently upon the face of Christ, and we want to learn to do that more and more. For those disciples, they're looking at each other, and instead of bringing calm or, 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 or great help, it actually probably brings up more fear. It induces more fear, more anxiety, more, even more of a sense of panic. Whereas the disciples at the other end of the boat, who are close to Jesus and looking at him, you see the calm, you see the peace, you see the confidence that they have in the power of God. Lots of lessons there for us, the primary one being that we want to grow in keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus, looking intently upon him at all times, and most especially during times of great, of great difficulty. Today I want to highlight one of the ways um, that the Holy Mass helps us, helps us to look intently on the face of Jesus. Uh, you may not be aware, but uh, there's instructions for the priest throughout the Mass that remind him, and not only remind him, they tell him, right now, look at the crucifix. Right now, look up to heaven. Right now, look down intently upon the sacred host where Jesus is present. These guides, you could, you could say, maybe can almost feel a little bit like micromanaging, right? How can the church even tell the priest, not just the words to say, but where to, where to place his gaze, right? Like where to look with his eyes. But yet the church, uh, the church does this not to hinder the priest, but to help him, right? To help him to pray and to pray more diligently. Where we look and gaze during the Mass has a huge impact on our prayer. This is true for the priest, and it's true for you as well. Uh, one of the dangers, just a, a little bit of an aside, one of the dangers of, of the priest facing the people during the Mass is that he, he can get distracted, right? He can lose his way. He can lose that sense of prayer when his eyes are looking out at you, especially when he's trying to pray to God. Um, it, can, it can be something that is kind of a hindrance to prayer, almost like in the boat, right? When the apostles were looking at each other, there was more anxiety. They saw each other's faces. They saw the terror in each other's face. And that made things actually worse, not better. But it was remedied when they looked intently upon the face of Jesus. And so for the priest during the Mass, it's very helpful to his prayer and important that he look upon the face of Jesus, that he has have his eyes fixed on Christ. 
and as well uh, for, for all of us, right? When we pray and look at each other, we have to be careful. There's a danger that we can think that, um, that we are praying to each other, which we're not doing, but we're praying to God, right? When I'm praying, I'm not, um, I don't want to think that you're God or you to think that I am God, but rather we are looking together towards the Lord. Okay, so um, first uh, thing for the priest. Generally, um, during the Mass, his, he's instructed to keep his eyes downcast, right? Generally, he's not supposed to look out at the people too much, or uh, again, so that he can have that proper spirit of prayer. During the procession in the church, right, as the priest and the servers are coming in, usually the priest keeps his, his head a little bit bowed so that he's not looking anyone directly in the eye. This isn't, uh, it's not being rude, right? Uh, but it, it's because we're doing something different. It would be a terrible thing if the priest walked in the procession even after the mass, as if it was almost like a rock concert, maybe giving people high fives on the way out or like trying to make a big show. That, that's not what we're doing here, right? What we're doing is something very different. We're trying to enter deeply into prayer. And so generally the priest is instructed to keep his head and his eyes downcast not looking anyone directly in, 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 in the face for most of the Holy Mass. What about uh, when is he instructed to look at the crucifix or as well, it's sometimes said to look up to heaven or to look towards God. He is specifically instructed to do this um, I counted nine times total. I mean, there's other times, and naturally it happens, right, just on how the prayers are said, but there's nine specific times when he's instructed, make sure right now you must, you must look up to heaven, you must look at the crucifix. Some of those times I just wanted to point out to you so, uh, so that they might help you as well. Um, when the, just before the priest reads the gospel, he goes to the center of the altar and he bows down for the munda cor meum. And just before bowing down, he glances his eyes up to the crucifix, bows down and begins the prayer. And this is a beautiful thing to be reminded just before he reads the gospel, to be reminded of the passion of Jesus, to be reminded that grace comes from the cross and to be strengthened so that the priest can proclaim the full gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, after that, at the Te Igitur, at the beginning of the Roman canon, again, you'll see the priest extend his arms in a large gesture and also raise his eyes, looking up to the cross, looking up to heaven. And then during the consecration, as the priest says, uh, says the words, um, uh, as he says the words of Christ, which in the, in the consecration say that he raises his eyes, looking up to heaven, um, the priest himself looks up to heaven as he says those words. All of this, again, in helping the priest to stay focused on Christ. What about for the host? What about for the sacred host? When does he look there? There are seven times when he's specifically instructed, look now at the sacred host. And of course, throughout the mass more, he'll, he'll look at the host more than those times. But these are some of them where he's specifically instructed. One of them is during the Pater Noster, the Our Father. He's to look intently on the sacred host. And as well, and this is, uh, this is an awesome one, is, uh, he's instructed to look upon the host and the chalice during the elevation. So at the consecration, when he lifts up the host and the server rings the bell, he's instructed to look at the host as he's raising it for all of you to see. And again, the same with the chalice. And what's really beautiful for the priest, and maybe this, it has the same effect for you, as he's looking up at the host, raising it high, just beyond the host, kind of like just in the background is the crucifix, right? It's almost like the host is set just in front of, of, of the crucifix. And that's so powerful because this is the mystery of the mass, right? At the mass, the host is the body of Jesus, the chalice, the wine in there is his precious blood. The mass is the sacrifice of Christ himself at Calvary. And it's so beautiful and fitting that during the mass, even in the way that we do it, that for the priest as he's looking up at the host, he sees right behind, right behind the crucifix. And maybe for you as well as you're looking, seeing right behind or just up slightly, you see the crucifix with Jesus there. The, the mass, uh, um, this reminding us of the great mystery of the mass, of the true presence and of the mass as the sacrifice of Calvary. Each of these, and I don't want to belabor them, but each of these moments of directing the eyes of the priest 
are, are really good and helpful and important in order to help the priest to pray deeply during the Mass. What about for you? What are your eyes doing during the Mass? Where are you looking, right? Um, what's going on for you? Um, the church doesn't exactly give, I don't think, any strong, like, you must look at this during the Mass. It doesn't really do that for the people. However, I mean, maybe the closest to this is during the consecration, when the bells are rung, that the service are ringing, the priest raises the host for you to see, for, for you to raise your eyes and to see. But maybe for much of the Mass, right, you're following along, possibly in your missal, right, and you're saying the prayers and, 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 and uh, following along what is happening at, at, the, at the Mass, and also then uniting your heart to, to what's going on. Uh, maybe in other ways, you're looking around and being reminded of the saints and the angels, which we see in our beautiful sanctuary. Everything in our sanctuary is to guide your eyes up, up to heaven, up to God, right? You, the steps, the steps in the raised sanctuary, bring your eyes and lift them up. The, uh, the arches up above, right? The arches kind of open up the window or the door to this reality beyond us. The high altar, right, the high altar is, is a vertical sign, right, trying to connect heaven and earth. For us, everything in here, our eyes, are, are, are trying to be drawn closely to Christ, in, uh, to God and to heaven. Um, for, uh, for you, right, um, what do you do with your eyes? How are your eyes helping you to pray during the Mass? We read in the gospel how during the storm, the apostles who were close to Jesus, who had their eyes intently, intensely fixed upon him, how, how they had peace, how they uh, were, were focused and how they, uh, they had everything when they were looking closely at Jesus. They called out to be saved and he saved them. For us, I think the same is true. It is, I don't think it is true. For us, we need more and more to look and to focus our eyes intently on Christ, being able to see him in the Holy Mass, but also in our, in our lives, whenever difficulty and danger comes, to make sure that we've got a clear line of sight to the face of Christ, and this will help us greatly. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, 